In today's video, we're gonna talk about designing a YouTube channel for maximum impact. So Zach, to kick it off, what, what is important for branding in real estate? What's important with those real estate visuals? Yeah, so when it comes down to making the maximum impact, it's really important to make sure that you are getting the questions answered for potential clients, right? And that is what is most important. Actually, your visuals, although they can be beneficial, it's not the most important, right? Having your logo fly in in the first three seconds horrible thing to do. Why? Because people are, have such small attention span that they might see your logo. They might see your intro and they're going to click away and find a video that gets them the, the impact that they want right away. And the questions that they want answered almost instantaneously. What, what about optimizing the channel for reality? Is there any specific specific on how to select specific keywords that drive people to the actual videos? Yeah. So, Local, local, local. I can't stress that enough. So if you're, let's just say you're in Philadelphia, right? Make sure you get everything down to that Philadelphia niche, right? Go as local and niche as humanly possible because that's what people are searching. So even down to the different neighborhoods that might be in there, different things within that area that you know best, right? You are the expert of the area that you serve. No one else should know more information than you. That's where you want to not only use the keywords in your description, although those are good, they're not going to make the impact you want. You know, this isn't early 2000s YouTube where you could just spam a bunch of keywords and you're going to rank up there. That almost, it's good to have a few different keywords, but any, anything more than three to five, it's almost a waste of your time. What's most important is delivering value inside the video and using then those keywords in the actual title. So for example, let's just say there's a neighborhood called West Hills. I'm totally making this up. There's not a neighborhood in West Hills in, in Philadelphia, but let's just say there was. You should say pros and cons of West Hills, Philadelphia. Why? Because think of how people search. Google owns YouTube, largest search engine in the entire world. When people are typing in certain things about West Hills, you're going to come up. And the more videos you do about that topic, assuming they're good, just because you're just going to post a bunch of videos doesn't mean you're actually going to get the results you want. But assuming they're good and assuming people watch them, you will rank higher on YouTube, which, one, which then will get you more views, which then gets you more engagement, which then ultimately gets you what you want, which is leads. So when thinking about it, you know, I, I know one of the most important things is to marry your thumbnail to the first couple of seconds of the video. You don't want that logo coming in. You don't want there to be something that's completely off topic with it. But when people are looking at these videos, do you ever organize things in specific types of playlists, um, you know, according to different property types or something specific to reality? Yeah. So thumbnail and title. It does not matter how great your video is. If your thumbnail and title isn't intriguing, isn't giving the people almost like curiosity into, Ooh, what is this about? Or, Hey, I know what that's going to be about, right? You know, pros and cons of Philadelphia, right? You probably will know what that's going to be about. It's not going to be a cat video. So having that image, a real clear image in there with exactly what it's going to be about, not too much text but some large text so that if you're on your little phone, you can still see it. And then corresponding title. So if it says, uh, you know, pros and cons of Philadelphia as your title, maybe there's an image of you kind of like, like a little curious and kind of like looking up and maybe there's a map of Philadelphia and it says maybe pros V cons or something like that. Boom. Now you have people's attention. They know what that's going to be about. And as soon as you click on the play button, or as soon as viewers click, click on that play button, what do you think should be said in the first three seconds? We're going to talk about the pros and cons of Philadelphia because now it's connecting the thumbnail, the title, and the first three seconds. They know you've built their trust. Now this person's going to give me exactly what I want out of this video. How about, I, I know one of the biggest pitfalls with, with marketing specifically for on YouTube for realtors is the call to actions. I know everyone wants to throw their call to actions. How do you do that without coming across cheesy too salesy and sticking with the ethos of YouTube? Yeah. I mean, too salesy again, this isn't early two thousands. I wouldn't be making a commercial 
as your YouTube video and just think that's going to result in something. It's, it's not, you want to post consistently one, two, three, four times a week consistently for three, six, 12 months at a time. But outside of that, the ending actually should almost come to an abrupt end. And you might go, wait a minute. I didn't say like, comment, subscribe, add me to the, all this stuff. No, you shouldn't do that. And you might say, well, why? I want them to get lead. I want to get leads, all this other, other stuff. Well, think of it like this. Here's the retention graph of, of YouTube. Retention graph, basically people watching your content. Really important. And let's just say it always starts out at 100%, right? 100% of people are watching at the beginning. And then it basically trickles down like a little hill going down, going down, going down, kind of like a stock market in 2008, just kind of going down. And what happens there is people are leaving your video. And that's what, that's what it's showing on YouTube. If you get towards the end and you start showing that you're wrapping up the video, Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget. I'm a real estate agent in Philadelphia. You know, if you, it would really be great if you like comment it and subscribe, what do you think is going to happen? They're not getting any, any value out of that. They're not, they're getting nothing out of that. So if you end kind of abruptly, it's actually better because then more people are watching it to the end, which then tells YouTube's algorithm, oh, people really like to watch this. We're gonna keep this up there. Now, to answer your question earlier, Dave, about, well, then how do you slide it in there? There's a few, there's a few unique ways that I've found that you can even do it midway through. So let's just say you're out in the field and you're like, this is one of the most beautiful areas of Philadelphia. Don't forget, I'm a real estate agent, so I do know a little bit about this. If you wanna, if you wanna give me a call, my number's right down below. But anyway, so that, that quickly, maybe two seconds, three seconds, gives you exactly what you want, which is I'm a realtor in this area, call me, uh, numbers below, that's all you really need. Don't waste your time, like, comment, and subscribe at the end. So, so it's really all about making things feel natural in the video and ma making things really come together in a way that feels seamless. So, so how, about, how about analytics for real estate? channels like are you ever looking at data um because i know that's that's an important thing and, and youtube specifically gives you a lot of data that you can take a look at yeah so i'm gonna get back to that data thing but i really liked what you said right there which was authenticity and we've all been to networking events we've all hung out with friends we've all met someone for the first time in life right your videos should basically be the same thing are you going to start out your introduction with someone Introducing yourself, okay, but then start saying, you should like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or at the end, when you're like, kind of, you know, the conversation's ending, you're gonna be like, oh, by the way, you should like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Not authentic, right? You've gotta be, at the end of the day, you're gonna, they're coming in as leads, right? You're gonna meet them in person one day. The more authentic you can be on camera, the more you can be yourself on camera, the better, because when they're, touring houses with you. Maybe you're giving them a ride around town. They're going to be with you for a few hours. They're making a big purchase here. You really got to be yourself. However you are on in person, you should be on video. Now, as far as analytics go, people get so obsessed with analytics, especially the beginners. And they think all of this stuff matters. And they're, they're they sit there and they, they basically have analysis paralysis and they, they won't produce content because of all these different analytics they see. The easiest thing I can tell you, and if you don't believe me, you can you know, t see the biggest YouTubers in the world all say this exact same thing. Don't look at it as the YouTube algorithm. Look at it as what will people watch? What will people get value out of? At the end of the day, it's not robots that are watching our content yet. <laughs> it's actual human beings. So if you can make content that actual human beings want to watch, What's going to happen? That's a, that's the YouTube algorithm. That's what YouTube will show. So there are tips and tricks, right? There's these little things that I just mentioned earlier, but in reality, the more you can match the thumbnail with the title, with the actual content in the video, the more likely you will be successful.